Daisla. Besides a greeting, Daisla also conveys a calling to order, a call to come together, a call to gather as friends, to gather as community, and a celebration. In thinking about what I might say this morning to begin this day in a special place in the Cokewell House with you, our guests, from all over the country. Many voices, many beliefs, many customs, many ways to speak to each other, many ways to hear. I heard the words of my ancestors carry through the voices of our living elders today and the elders that have passed from us that we still recall in our own memories. Instructions and lessons from long ago that even in their antiquity become basis of our own thinking foundation of our own efforts, framework for all our aspirations. Elders are those who watch over us, teach us, and admonish us, admonish the next generation of what to watch for, what to pay attention to, what to learn. Elders remind us that there must always be those who can sing a proper song, say a proper prayer, always at the proper time, always in the proper way. As any Native American basket maker, basket weaver might tell you, to make a successful basket requires first that your heart is good, and that you've gathered all the proper materials, and that you've taken care of those materials in all the proper ways. But for your basket to be a truly good one, you must also sing a good song into it. And in that song you sing, you must sing it for yourself, and for your family, and for your community. But two, you must sing it for all the people. And so today in the work we are here to do, let us have good hearts. Let us sing a good song. Let us make a good basket. And let us always be reminded that though the work is ours to do here today, it is also the work for all the people. It must be for all the people. So I say to you again this morning, Daisla, hello friends, greetings friends, welcome.
for those of you that were able to go on the bus tour yesterday, you saw examples of our priorities in timber management. We manage these lands for timber revenues that support the programs and direct services that we have deemed important to our membership, but also with the priorities of finding a balance and managing for all natural resources. Traditional foods and plants for hunting and fishing habitat as well, and for future generations. The successes we have seen have come to us because of a lot of hard work and dedication from our past tribal leadership, our elders, and by the hard work and dedication from some of our amazing staff that I would like to recognize here today. Mr. George Smith, as he plans for the day. Executive Director George Smith. Could you stand, please, and be recognized? <laughs> George has been with us from the beginning. When we first started uh, even contemplating that it might be a possibility to be able to manage some of our ancestral homelands here. He has been an intricate part of, of the acquisition of Cocoa Forest that we'll talk about today. And in writing our management plan for those lands, and that, that spans back 20 years for the Cocoa Tribe. I recognize you, George, in front of all of these people because they know You've done great work for the Cocoa Tribe, and you've done great work in Indian Country. So I give you a hand. That was 20 years ago, but just recently this year, another accomplishment the Cocoa Tribe have had is a reacquisition of 3,200 acres of timber land here in our ancestral homelands. George, again was a huge part in that, in that process. A process that amazingly took about six months from the time we heard about that property being available to closing on that property and writing a management plan that I'm so very proud of. I too wanted to recognize Pete Wakeland. Pete, can you stand up for a second? Pete Wakeland has come to us as our Natural Resources Director and recently, actually, in the last six months, has joined us. We are so happy to have Pete on board. He walked into uh, our Natural Resources Department about the time we uh, found that piece of property we were interested in and has hit the ground running. He was an uh, intricate part of writing that management plan also. Uh, a management plan that was written in about 30 days, for all of you that know how hard that is for 3,200 acres of land. We recognize his, his talent and his work, and we are so happy to have him on board. It is a blessing for us to uh, have Pete here. It is so important for all of you that you foresters and, and staff that work for tribes. Those are the people on the front line that are protecting the resources of Indian people and making sure that we're taking care of things the best way we can. I too want to recognize all of the many friends and family that are in this room today. I uh, look around this room and welcome all of the tribes that are here. It's great to see each of you. So the Cocoa Indian tribe has been here since time began. In 1855, after treaties were signed, of course, never ratified, Cocoa people were marched to the coastal reservation hundreds of miles north of the coast. As for many of our people, after disease, relocation, and effective assimilation program, the Cocoa people were terminated. In 1954, by federal policy, we were terminated. That was not acceptable to Cocoa people. We came home, and we continued to gather, and we continued to celebrate, and we continued to take care of our elders and our young people. 
After many years, on June 28, 1989, we were again restored federal recognition. 1991, our Constitution was written, our self-sufficiency plan written and approved by Congress. And in 1996, by an act of Congress, the Coquillian tribe achieved the ability to manage 5,400 acres of ancestral homeland and had written our first management plan. You will hear more about the management requirements that make us unique to Indian country that we struggle with every day. But you will also hear about Foucault people and what we are doing on our land, and again, why we celebrate today. We are happy you are here today. I am confident that your stay here at the Casino is going to be a good, good visit for you. I am so confident that I will be giving my cell phone number out to anyone who has a, a problem with anything here, because it is our, our work to make sure that you are felt welcome and that you are enjoying your time. So, I would also like to uh, just take a moment to recognize our symposium committee that does a lot of the work here to get us all set up. And to our ITC board of directors, thank you all so much for your work. So, it, I think it's time to get started. And, uh, I will uh, turn it over to Pete Wakeland and we'll get started today. Thank you. So, first of all, I want to thank uh, thank everybody for being here and welcome. Uh, um, I want to thank Brenda and and George and Pete and the whole team that's that's been here, that's opened their their place, um, and, and our veterans who who came and posted the colors. I mean, these are these are the things that make Indian country really great and a part of who we are. And opening your homeland, this place where we're all connected to place, we're all connected to the land that we come from. And uh, I, I think it's, each of us have our own story. And I think Coquille has a unique story that will give us a, a, a great picture that we'll be able to witness this week. And so, thanks, Brendan. Uh, on, on that note, I, I, I want to make sure we, we hit a couple points. Uh, First of all, there's a lot of people here, but you, everybody, if you haven't been to the Inter, Intertribal Timber Council Symposium, if you see all the, these, these uh, buckets and you see these people selling tickets, this is for our scholarship fund. And this last year, over $55,000 went to fund um, scholarships across Indian country, even folks in natural resources. And it, it's a pretty important part. We probably, and I'm hoping we can raise quite a few, few different things. So a lot of different tribes have contributed the, the gifts that are here, and we have a drawing, and we'll announce some more of the bigger items on on um, on Thursday during the banquet. But please buy and 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 buy tickets and put them in there and, and be one of the lucky folks that that win a few of these things. It's a it's a really huge thing for. I, I actually received a scholarship when I was in school a few years ago, which is becoming a few years ago now. Um, and I think it, you see you see Orvi. Um, and the education committee really moving um, and doing a lot of work in this way, and so I, I want to make sure we, so make sure you go buy some raffle tickets and do that. <laughs> I, I too want to thank uh, the symposium committee for pulling this together and all the time and effort put into this, and and also with the host tribe. And the, I know it's an enormous amount of staff time at the local tribe, but also um, you know Howard Teasley and the whole team there doing a lot of work, and I think we need to. To make sure, if you guys need questions or have have you know any any kind of thing, we we have a lot of different items on our agenda today, but really, you know, the, the Intertribal Timber Council is bringing our, the BIA and the tribes together to have a conversation on forestry, and, and so I think that's the most important part. And the real nice part that you see here is we see the young the younger folks, the, the next generation of students here, um, and also though our our elders George and. And those guys that that have, and Gary, uh, that have been here, have been the leaders in 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 natural resource management and forestry, and and this conversation. And we're tribes are in a unique time frame, and today's panel is a, an excellent example. A lot of effort and time has been put into to looking at the IFMAT three report, looking at 
Anchor Forest and the Tribal Forest Protection Act and our place in the national conversation on what's happening with active forest management. You see the fires, you see the, the extent. It's 100 degrees at home where, where I'm from uh, in Yakima. And, and what is climate change doing to those ecological things and what roles do tribes have? And, and so I hope today we, we'll have and, and start that dialogue. But there's, there's other things like climate change and, and other, you know, we've had the fire workshops and all these different things that we're involved in. And as you start talking about these things, it, the real important part for us, though, is where are our next generation of foresters and our workforce development? And so all these things are kind of in the IFMAT report. They're kind of things that we're, we've been working on for, for a long time. And so I hope we have a really successful um, symposium in that way. And I think the real important part for us is it takes the folks here. Um, whereas we have these conversations. Uh, we will have moments of findings and recommendations. And I, I invite you and hope that you will join us in, and making sure that as we have these conversations that we'll have successful dialogue back and forth and we can move the agendas that the Indian country wants to see that's necessary to help us support our way of life, our connection um, to the land and the places that we are. So I think I'm doing my speech right now instead of it later on this afternoon. So <laughs> I, I just want to thank, again, thank everybody for being here. Uh, thank Coquille for being the, the gracious host and all the different folks. Um, enjoy yourself. Spend some time. Make sure you buy raffle tickets. Um, I know there will be a host dinner here tonight. Um, and tomorrow will be a, a field trip. Uh, and so there's always a lot of stuff going on. Catch any board members, you know, open up, talk with any one of us. We, um, they're, they're a great bunch of folks. Um, so thank you, and uh, we will move it forward. I'll hand it over to Pete.